as the undecided podcast, in which we cannot decide on anything yet, with the conflicted hosts, Mike and Sophie. How are you, Sophie? Well, I'm feeling pretty well, actually. A little bit tired, just been to a conference. (gasps) Lucky you. I've been sitting around doing nothing, (laughs) waiting for you to turn up late. Oh, don't blame me, please. Oh, no, I won't blame you. I'll blame the whole fact that it was Valentine's Day yesterday. Uh, right. <laughs> actually, that, actually, that just reminds me of a question. How does one wish Happy Valentine's Day to single people? Now, now it's, it's a little bit strange that you, that you bring that up, because since it was yesterday, did you get a Valentine's? No. No, nor did I. We're both single, mate. Yeah, well, yeah I know that, but the audience doesn't know that, do they? So it's just, yeah, so like, if you are single, Mm -hmm. you're pretty much going to either be mental in your head, saying Mm -hmm. very pretentious things, trying to affirm that being single is the ideal life, or you Mm -hmm. put up something pretentious on social media, like I did yesterday. Oh, really? Or or sob story. Yeah, or a sob story. Something like that. Yes, as in how many chocolates I've eaten this day, because I just want to feel loved. Yes, just like just get like a complete large block of chocolate and just eat it while you, while you're listening to Eric Carmen's All by Myself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I think the Valentine's box of chocolates they don't end up being given to partners. I think they give being bought by single people just for themselves. Unfortunately, yeah. Is it just me or is it? No, but, well, well, if you are in a couple situation. Mm. You're either in one of two camps. One, that you're completely fine regardless mm. and not give a shit because you've got other things stressing you out like um, paying the mortgage or paying the, or looking after the kids. Mm. Or you're one of these rich people that just go out on dates like I did with a random phone call I got yesterday from a restaurant asking, oh, is your um, appointment at six o'clock? Are you going to confirm that with us? I'm like, what? So is your name Ken? No, you got the wrong number. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Why does Valentine's Day exist anyway? That's the part that annoys me. Well, I do know a little bit of the origins. Um, you have um, St. Valentine, may he rest in peace. He actually reunited a lot of his soldiers and their loved ones during times of war. Well, that's the basic story anyway, and it uh, might just be a giant urban myth. But then again, just like Christmas Day, it just might be over-commercialised by the chocolatey companies to, you know, sell more chocolate. Just another excuse. But like Easter. It's, it's kind of funny that we celebrate holidays for someone dying or someone being born. Mm. Well, those are the two of the most important events of your lives. Yeah, I, I know that, but like you would think that holidays would signify some sort of relative importance. You know, the other thing about mm. Valentine's Day is that that's when James Cook died. Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. He died in Tonga on, on Valentine's Day. Oh, that was just lovely. Not. <laughs> <laughs> so, how, so um, yes, how does one... How do you think one should celebrate Valentine's Day as a single person? Basically because you're going to be deep with sorrow and despair that you don't have anybody. Either you can be a good person and just say Happy Valentine's Day with, without actual meaning. Or, you know, put assholes in small font. Yeah, yeah. L- l- like a good quality Times New Roman 8 eight font. No, six. So, four. Yeah, four. Four. Okay. And silver. Yeah. Or you can treat someone mm. and you're going to have an awkward conversation for the coming months mm. about the possibility of having a romantic relationship with that person or not. True. <laughs> Which I highly doubt in my case because I'm getting to that stage where I just don't care anymore. I'm not sure about you being a youngin. <laughs> 19. Yeah, 19 compared to me going on 31 Mm. or 65 (laughs) well whatever happens i think it is a time to avoid pushy parents or grandparents or people who care about their progeny and their legacy oh i always love those conversations uh it's gone to the point that my parents don't really care because my standards Mm. of of a pretentious bride, if we call it that, mm. um, is far and above their expectations of me, mm. of my possible bride or suitor or whatever. 
keep in mind they still ha- they do have grandchildren from you know another sibling. Oh yes. So uh, the pressure is off you now. No, the pressure's still there. Oh, just <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> Because I am the prodigal son, apparently, which I think is a whole lot of bullshit. But hey, when you're the firstborn, assumptions tend to be made. Yes, especially in the patriarchal society in which, you know, firstborn sons get everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Say that to the person who, uh, yeah, didn't get everything. (laughs) (laughs) Well... Pressure's not on me yet because, well, luckily my parents still focus on my studies rather than my love life. But I know as a young Asian woman, one day my mother will be saying to me, Hey, I think it's about high time you go find a nice boy. Nice boy? Does your mother have pretentious thoughts? You know I'm posh. Oh. You know I am from a, you know I am an upper crust. So of course you have pretentious <laughs> thoughts. Of course. If I recount my lineage, blah de blah blah um... Rich people, rich people, rich people. Speaking of stuff that rich people do, mm. did you go to the Coldplay concert? Oh, I wish I had, except it was down in um, South Auckland, so Dad said no. <gasps> Wait, where was that concert again? It was actually in like new, like North Stadium or something, rather. Okay. So it's I couldn't find friends to go with, and my you know Dad's a little bit overprotective sometimes, and yeah, he didn't quite realise that Coldplay was um, not going to be you know there in the prison anymore. So yeah, yeah. So what's your take on Coldplay? Oh come on, I love them. Really? Yes. Even the new stuff? Yeah. Why? Why? Well, it's your problem for being a hipster, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah. That you pretty much completely dumbed down my entire argument. Thank you very much. <laughs> No, no, no. I know it's all very personal taste, and I know that Viva La Vida actually managed to, you know, produce a giant seismic shift in the whole Coldplay fandom. Yes, yeah. I will admit, I woke up this morning really early, got mm. re- got, and I actually listened to the new album. Oh, um, Adventure of a Lifetime? Yes. Mm. And I clicked off after song five. That's pretty far in. Did you listen to the one with Beyonce in it? Uh, goodness no, knows. No, I didn't even go that far. You should, yes, well, maybe I should force you to listen to it, because it's quite good. But... No, 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 after the podcast, sure, but not right now. There's this thing, I don't know, it's called copyright? <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> yes, I, uh, no, well, I was thinking about making you listen to it on headphones, so that all they hear is... Well, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not going to work. Really? Oh, I, I, okay. Okay. How can I explain this to you as nicely as humanly possible? You know, bef- like after Via La Vida... Viva La Vida, yes. That, that won the Best Rock Grammy. Mm. They, haven't won a, they haven't won a Grammy since. Because they're no longer rock Grammy. Rock artists. They're now pop artists. Yeah, but they haven't won a Grammy in any category. They've been nominated. Yeah. But they haven't won a Grammy. Does it matter? Because it could just easily mean that other new talents sprung up. That's true. Yeah. Have you had a look at the Metacritic scores for the Coldplay albums like I did this morning? Does it matter? It does. Because it shows that the first three albums were 76, 80, mm. 72. Viva La Vida also got 72. Mm. And all the rest of the albums are in the 60s with the last one being 60. So, I just, I still enjoyed it. I mean, I think the point of music is to, you know, enjoy what you enjoy, and if other people don't like it, then just don't force them to, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. Music is an experience. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can understand that, and that's the reason why we decided to pick this topic, because we are both undecided on this issue. Yes. <laughs> Ah, uh, but still, I absolutely, uh, I absolutely love Coldplay, and I do understand that people don't enjoy the new stuff because, yes, well, two thousand eight was a huge style split for them, and of course, it's going to cause trouble. And I was actually very surprised when, with the ghost stories, they collaborated with Avicii with A Sky Full Stars. Yes, but the, the, the difference between our our tastes is mm-hmm. that I'm very simple. Mm. With with the way that's why I, uh, I enjoyed the first three albums. Yeah, it was very MTV unplugged ish. Yes, and then it seems to have more complicated sounding. I know the understanding of an evolution. Yes, d- during the albums, mm. but I think if they were to revamp or rebrand, it would be best if they went back to the roots. 
Oh yes. So what? So did you listen to Magic by Ghost Stories? Yes. That was going back to the old times, right? But still, no. 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 If you compare the whole album. No, that was a re- Ghost Stories was a hodgepodge. <laughs> so you had and even you admit <laughs> yes, that the old cold, that the new Coldplay is posh posh. Hodgepodge, which means all sorts of different things mashed up together. <laughs> because no doubt Coldplay's mm. going to have a new album either late this year or next year. If they still continue, I think they, I think, I think they broke up somehow. They decide to break up or will rebrand themselves. Yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But eventually, over a lifetime, what well, came shockingly close after Ghost Stories, because um, there's usually um, a three-year gap between the albums. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you have the thought about dyeing your hair? I don't know why, because you have black hair. Mm. Not only do you have to bleach it beforehand, but since since you're also a chiwi... Yes. Isn't there some sort of contextual negativity with Asians dyeing their hair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, I'm, I'm a non-conformist, and I like to try something different from time to time. I mean, it doesn't just... I don't have to um, bleach it. If I want it semi-permanent or permanent, I will have to bleach it beforehand, but there's hair chalk. But the problem with hair chalk is that as soon as you put any water on it, it just washes out. Okay. Yes. Yeah, because, like, I've dyed my hair hmm? numerous times. You're blonde. You can get away with it. I know. I know, and it's sort of like, oh, what is this the guy dying his hair for? <laughs> there, I had some respectable colours, all right? Yes. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, we'll go through the list. Mm. I went red twice. Yes. And I mean, like, like strawberry red. Parakeet red? Par- parakeet red. Okay, we'll go with parakeets. Yeah. Um, purple once. Mm. What type of purple? Your glass is purple. Okay, so how would we describe that? It's dark grape. Yeah, 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 grape. Yeah. Great grape. Yes. <laughs> Black once. Oh, yes. That was for a cosplay that, that I went to an All Blacks game dressed up as um, a character on the footy show. I know you don't know what that is. Too young. <laughs> Too young. What is it called? I've had highlights done in my hair. Right. So, yeah. like a Blue Angels stunt show. Yeah, pretty much. A- and funny enough that the highlights were done... Because my mother and my sister conned me to do it. Really? Yeah. Says, oh, let's let's do a test run on Mike. (laughs) So we know what highlights actually look like. (laughs) Mike's dignity has gone out the window years ago. Let's let's do this. But I do, I do realise there's a sort of punkish attitude towards women, uh, Asian women with dyed hair. And uh, one of them, and but you know... I wanted to do a little bit something different. And to be he- and to be fair, though, my hair isn't exactly black. It's just very, very dark brown. But still, nonetheless, it's quite long, it's quite luscious, it's quite silky. And one of the problems of bleaching it is that it kind of does destroy your hair unless you do it properly with, you know, $1,000 salons, things like that, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, that's, and that's, um, that's one of my barriers, I suppose. It's how expensive it would be to do it properly. Yeah, uh, uh, especially, yeah, especially um, around about if you go to a hairdresser where you live. Yeah. Because, like, w- like walking from the hospital, like I mm. do from time to time, walking past the hairdressers, and a men's trim costs $45. Getting my hair up and my makeup done for the ball, 120 that's a that, that's a lot of money, eh? Yes, I know, but they are very high quality. The... Um, the hairdressers are, of course, gorgeously cut. They do their, they do each other's hair as practice. I went to St. Cuthbert's, and that was my principal's regular hairdresser. That just to give you, just to give you some sort of high, high, how how high their caliber was. If you were to go through these processes, mm-hmm. do you have any color preferences at this stage? Blue. Blue. Like my net eels, they're like the aqua blue type thing. Okay. Mm. You mean like Marana Trench blue? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's sort of strange that you're having a a moldy guy mm. with white complexion. Yes. And a posh chiwi, mm. Chinese kiwi for people who don't know what a chiwi is, mm. coming together to do in a podcast. Chiwi with a, British, with a British kiwi accent, yes, I know. It's a little bit unusual. 
Yes. We, we, we'll cross so many different spectra. I mean, Mike here is um, um, the most Kiwi of Kiwis, whereas here I'm just barely Kiwi. And um, we, we are com- from completely different social economic backgrounds. Did, yeah, dead right. Mm. We, we are completely, completely off the beaten track. Mm. Yeah, I, I would think of myself as a as a stick uh, as a. Well, what's the best way to say it? I'm a from the sticks. Yes. Yeah. I'm a true. I'm a true Aucklander. Ah, uh, yeah. Jaffa. I'm a Jaffa. Uh, you should actually dye your hair chocolate. No, orange. <laughs> Orange with brown highlights. <laughs> That's Jaffa. <laughs> just, just pick it up from Countdown. Two for five dollars. It'll be fine. Oh, yes. Just melt the chocolates into my hair. <laughs> <laughs> but, but because of that, mm-hmm. and considering that we're both studying different subjects, of course. At the same university. At the same university. That's how we met. Um, yeah, for, for the viewers out there. So I, I always like to point out to, to the class that Auckland is not New Zealand, and what I mean by that mm-hmm. is that Auckland's way to Auckland's the most posh bit. This is the most diverse bit. This is not good representation. Yes. Even though, what's the percentage of Asian descent in New Zealand now? It's about eleven percent. Yeah, but it's like it's number three mm. behind. European and Maldives, which make up around about 77% of the population. Right. Do you think that New Zealand is becoming multicultural? Mm. Or do you think there is there is still a large amount of biculturality in New Zealand? Well, that's an interesting question. I've expected to, I expected New Zealand to be a little bit more tricultural in some parts because remember the Chinese, we've been coming here since the 1870s for the gold rush. Yes. So I suspect some parts of New Zealand will be more really tricultural. So for example, the southern areas where the gold used to be, some of the Chinese people stayed, they grew vegetables, and of course, um, lots of our market gardens are still run by Asian people. Isn't So you, you actually bring up a good point there. Yeah. And I do have a friend, who, no, acquaintance now. We haven't seen each other for ages. She's Chinese, Māori, and Scottish at the same time. That's one hell of a mix. I know. And you should see the name of her passport. It just basically runs to 16 characters. Because she has to incorporate all her descent into, you know, her name. Now, do you think that over the next 30 years... Mm-hmm. Would you, We'll we'll say 30 years is sort of like a benchmark there. Yeah, that's about a generation. Do you think that it'll be quad cultural? What will be the fourth culture? Indian. Yeah, Indians, they've been here... uh, Okay, so I've been talking to a lot of uh, my Uber drivers, taxi drivers. A lot of them have arrived here during the 1970s, 80s and 90s. Yeah. So... The Chinese, the Chinese. Um, it took us goodness knows a hundred years to get ourselves fully integrated. I suppose. I'll say, well, it's been f- about fifty years. So I say it'll take another fifty years for the Indian culture to be fully integrated in New Zealand. That being said, quite a few. I mean, one or two Indian festivals are already celebrated around New Zealand. Diwali is really popular because you know everyone loves lights. Yeah. In the dark. Yeah. And, and, and color runs. Yeah, and considering that you know two. two Blocks of Queen Street were shut off yeah. for Diwali. Yeah. I mean, who can blame them? I mean, everyone's just, oh my goodness, why is there traffic jam? Oh, pretty. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. And, and considering that, was it Holy Starts next month? Oh, goodness. Which is, um, oh, for, yeah, it's the Festival of Lights. Yeah. So we'll see what happens there. Mm. But I would think something very similar would happen. Yeah. E- either at Altair Square mm. or at the Domain. Yeah, and the La- and the Lantern Festival was huge. Oh yes, it's always it's, it's it's been huge for the last few years now. I mean, you can't you can't really move in there anymore. It's just it's so noisy, so colourful. I mean, I guess everyone likes I, I guess everyone likes lights in the dark. Okay, there's something so comforting about that. <laughs> Even though I'm not a big fan of fireworks, because all it is is just balls of light and balls pretty of, circles. Ball, balls of fire. Balls yeah, of fire. Yeah, no, balls of fire and nice pretty circles. <laughs> As opposed to balls of steel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! 
<laughs> no. D- no, just, just, just no. Just don't go there. So, and, yeah, a lot of people consider fireworks to be you know, a waste of time because, you know, you light them, they're gone within a few seconds. But, you know, lanterns are a little bit different. I mean, they they can go on all night and you can reuse them. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Re- reusable fireworks? Actually, that's an idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I, I'm, I'm seriously thinking that that technolo- technology is so so vast now. I'm just waiting for mini drones to come up in the sky, sky and just light up on on command. Dude, that's already happening. You can you can three D print drones, put small battery packs on them, and put an LED light. Yeah. Yeah, you can, you can, I mean, some, somebody must have done it already. It's so damn easy. Yeah, I'm just waiting for the price to come down so it'll just be normalised. True. All VR, all VR, three, all VR fireworks. <laughs> Augmented reality fireworks. Augmented reality fireworks I can get on. Yes. But virtual reality fireworks, that's kind of... Tacky. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like playing Boom Boom Rocket. Oh god, that was a horrible game. Thank you, EA, for making Boom Boom Rocket. What's Boom Boom Rocket? It's, it, it was a Xbox exclusive game mm. made by EA, mm. and it was like Guitar Hero, where you had to time the fireworks as it appeared on the screen. Oh really? Yeah. So you had to like push like left, right, A, B, and it was just like an accommodation for the fireworks to go off. Left, right, left, right, A, B, A, B, start. Uh, uh, thank you. A- another Namco reference. Or was it Co- Co- Konami? I think it was a Konami Yeah, song. Konami reference. <laughs> yes. Eh? Yeah, didn't you know that? Talking about cheating, how about cheating with chopsticks? <laughs> oh, okay. As a non-Asian person, <laughs> yes. I'm, I, I sort of have two left hands. <laughs> when, it co- when it comes to eating with chopsticks. Yeah. Because I always think that I have to grab it perfectly mm. rather than doing a scoop. Mm. You can do the scoop, though, but that kind of makes you out as a peasant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for pointing out my socioeconomic lifestyle. Thank you for pointing that out. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, considering that you have had a lifetime of chopstick use, how are you like at chopsticks? I'm using my chopsticks wrong, apparently. So says your mother. So says everybody. So says everybody. What is wrong with it? Apparently, um, you're not supposed to hold your chopsticks like a pen. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But, um, but, you know, they don't really complain because somehow I've been feeding myself for the last 19 years or so perfectly fine with my modified way. But, uh, yeah, it's, it just looks really bad and I shouldn't never teach people how to use chopsticks because I've been using them wrong for the last, um, well... Two decades? Yes, two decades. Now, the part that always reminds me about chopsticks was mm. a was a old cartoon from the, from the early 2000s called Brotown. Mm. I'm not sure if you've heard of that show. I've watched a few episodes. Okay, the episode that always got me was the Asian episode. Oh, goodness, of course they must do an Asian episode. Yes. And the the accent was horrible. And the only reason why he immigrated to New Zealand Mm. was because his father made a spork attachment to chopsticks. And the Chinese government wouldn't wouldn't have had a bar of it that's why they sent them over to New Zealand. <laughs> oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> wow. Yeah. How about sporks in general? What do you think of them? Considering that the only the only time I've actually had sporks mm. is with you. Oh, yeah. Well, here's the thing with sporks, right? There were there there are a spoon and fork combination, or spoon knife and fork combination, depending on which companies um, sporks you use. And they're generally used in the outdoor setting because, you know, they can they compress things together and you have to pack as light as possible if you are going to survive out in the bush. And, um, yeah, the, lots of campers love them. But here's the thing, though. Is it tacky to use sporks outside of the campfire setting? No, I wouldn't think so. It'll be, it'll be tacky mm. to have it inside mm. a... a a setting 
where where people are using knife and forks. So you shouldn't use sporks where other people use knife and forks to actually make a statement about, you know, your campfire in your... It's like putting up a tent indoors. True. How tacky is that? Well, some people enjoy doing... Well, you know, pillow forts. There's no more tacky than pillow forts. You know, if you have children around, you can, like, you, can you are absolutely excused. You can just make a tent inside, put up some fairy lights, and just, you know, tell stories until everyone falls asleep. Now, yeah, yeah, but yeah, that's completely fine yes. when, when, when you're a kid, right? right. But if, you, if you're going to put a tent yeah. that you would use at Mount Everest Base Camp yeah. in the middle of your living room? <laughs> Come on! Well, you can, you can say it's a statue of, uh, you know, like a testament to your greatness. Oh, great, that's bad. Yeah, 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 that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. Yes, that's, um, that's rather, I don't know, um, pretentious. That's the word, pretentious. Yeah, yeah, and, and speaking of pretentious, apparently there's this word on the street, this was news that came out. Yes. That they are creating Wi-Fi at the base camp at Mount Everest. They had that for ages. They, did they? Yeah. One megabyte a second. They had that for ages. That's that, that's faster than most speeds in New Zealand, Wait, isn't it? Wait, is it, is it one megabyte a second? I think it's one byte a second or something, rather. No, no, no. Uh, Mount Everest Wi-Fi. <laughs> I do have my... I don't have... Oh, my goodness. I don't have a password, don't do I? No, you don't. Okay. Okay. I'm pretty sure Mount Everest had Wi-Fi for quite a few years now. Okay. Yeah, the base camp. Um, but it would be rather strange if it had Wi-Fi on the summit, though. Say, <laughs> so, yeah, up the summit. Say, so, God damn, I forgot my password. It's in the bag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes, well, I guess the ultimate—I guess the ultimate rich thing, rich person, well, hipstery thing to do these days is to take a selfie up on Mount Everest and post it on Instagram. Oh, I, okay. Even more pretentious. Yeah. Get a helicopter, fly to the summit, take the selfie, hop back on the helicopter, and go home. You can't do that. Oh come on. Um, the air's too thin. Uh. Helicopters can't be. Helicopters can't be supported up there. But um, I guess you can. What you can do. No, I don't think he even. I don't think he even fly to base camp. It's the East Ruthen. But it's a really pretentious thing if you think about it. If you can do it, if you can pull it off, or no, a jetpack, jetpack your way up to Mount Everest. <laughs> jetpack your way. What, what are you, James Bond? Why not? Da 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 da. da. <laughs> that would be really pretentious though. If you jetpacked, especially if it's gold, a golden jetpack. Oh, uh, God, uh, gold jetpacks. Yes. Oh. Plays it with like 24 karat gold. So anyway, for, when it comes to sporks, is it a spoon, knife and fork or is it just a spoon and a knife? I mean, I'm a spoon and a fork. Because you... Well, well, isn't it both technically? Okay. Well, the spoon, knife and fork version seems to be only made by one company, Light My Fire, and they're made in Sweden. I, I, I would assume that they have the pattern of it. Yeah, I think they do. Which is oh. why no one, no one else does a spoon, knife and fork combination. <laughs> but... Um, they're really, really good utensils until you break them. They're made of plastic. You can get um, metal ones, and I probably should get metal ones, but I can't seem to find them. I have, probably have to order them from Sweden or something. Considering that, you know, sporks are called sporks because it's an amalgamation of yeah. those words. Spoon, knife, and fork. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't expect when, when they were trying to pitch the fork in, in, the, in the boardroom, it says, oh, let's call it a foon. <laughs> <laughs> They probably did do it. It's like, <laughs> well, you know, brainstorming ideas, strange things come out. Yeah. Anyway, back to chopsticks. There is now, you know, you know how you know how you have the sport combination on a chopstick. Yes. There is now, and this is in real life. There is a knife and fork combination with the chopsticks. Yeah. So on one chopstick you have the knife, and the other chopstick you have the fork. And you can combine them together to make easy chopsticks, you know, European chopsticks. European chopsticks? European, we call them <laughs> European chopsticks or cheetahs chopsticks because, um, because basically the chopsticks are joined on the base side like a spring to make it a whole lot easier. <laughs> okay, okay, not, not only do you have attachments, yes. you have a spring. Well, yeah, mo most designs, uh, let's see. Easy, yes, most easy chopsticks actually have a spring at the base so that you can actually, you know, operate it like a crocodile crocodile jaw or like a, or like a clothes pig. I mean, we can be contacted on email as the undecided podcast at gmail.com or we can be found at AYD podcast 
on Twitter, Tumblr, as well as Facebook. Or you can contact us personally. Mike? Uh, I am the Manus, T-H-E-M-A-R-N-U-S, on every social media platform, and Sophie? I am Sophie9709, on everything apart from Instagram, because some random lady stole it from me ages ago. I'm Mike, and... This is... And I am Sophie. See you next week with more Undecided Decisions.